very much for uh, the invitation to this uh, colloquium. I, I tried very hard to be here, including climbing over a fence yesterday night in order to sneak into the guest house, which was kind of non-trivial. Um, yeah, so there was some, some non-trivial physical effort going on. Um, yeah, I shouldn't do this. This is recorded, right? Yeah. That's wall crossing. <laughs> <laughs> That's wall crossing. That's wall crossing. Absolutely, yeah. So, so what this talk is about, I have a bit of physical limitations with this blackboard. So try to do my best. Uh, so this talk is going to be, a, well, essentially a tale of two characters. So about two characters. Uh, characters as characters in the play. So character number one is, um, from a physical point of view, a uh, topological gauge theory. So a gauge theory, which in, in my case will leave on on real three-dimensional um, smooth manifold. And from a mathematical point of view, this was proposed by Witten in order to describe uh, well a class of invariants that arise from uh, from quantum groups. Quantum invariants. Sort of mathematical counterpart of this. Uh, of a real tree manifold. <coughs> and character number two is where from a physical point of view, so I understand we have a mixed audience today, is again a topological theory topological field theory, but coupled to gravity in two dimensions. So, so I'm first quantize topological string theory. And the particular version that I will be discussing today is something that is related to curve countings on, um, on killer manifolds, actually on, on Calbia uh, manifolds in dimension three. So the mathematical counterpart is, well, your favorite curve counting theory of complex frequencies. And these are the two guys. This is what they are. I'm going to describe them in momentarily, but before I tell them, before I tell you who, who they are, let me tell you what they will do in my talk. So I got two messages. So the first message of this talk is that, well, character one is equal to character two. Well, under suitable conditions. So both of these guys have um, will give you a bunch of numerical invariants that can be naturally organized in generating function forms. And my claim is that generating functions for the first guy under suitable identification of parameters will match with uh, generating function of curve counting invariants of Calvi-Alves. So this is uh, an identification that was put forward in physics literature by, by Gopakumar and Bafa in, I guess, 98, and further elaborated upon by Guri and Bafa in 99. So this is the first message. And the second message is that both of these guys under essentially the same conditions so that the first line holds are governed by the another on recursion 
It was introduced this morning by, by Bertrand. So the plan of the talk is just a very broad overview, is to, well, I assume that not everyone is familiar at least with one, one side, either side of the correspondence. So I'm going to tell you first of all what I mean by the sublogical gauge theory. I've already spotted its name in the title. <coughs> then I'm going to introduce its string theory counterpart, Kirk County counterpart. Then I'm going to give you some evidence in favor of the existence of this correspondence. And the evidence in question, so it's good for pedagog pedagogical reasons to deal with uh, one chief example. It's going to be, for the most, most part, um, a review of the original results of Gopaku Maruguri and Vafa. But it's not just, it's, this does not address just a, a pedagogical need. The thing is that there is, at the moment, no structural theory behind the existence of this correspondence. What we have is essentially, this is essentially phenomenological theory. We have a bunch of examples where we have some belief, often by physics, that um, an identity like that should hold. There was a 120-page paper by Witten Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah no, that's, that's a bit different. That, that's a bit different. That's actually the Kopakumar Vafa reinterpretation of a topological string. So, yeah, that, it's, it's not what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, when I saw the paper, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I have this look Tuesday. And then I'm going to discuss this, the relation with topological recursion. And since most of my talk will be of expository nature, and on this one example that is well understood, the sort of need that we will have by the end is to extend the circle of ideas to, well, as much as possible, essentially. The broadest cast of three manifolds where we believe that such a correspondence exists. So there is extensions of the circle of ideas, obstructions that I, I'll try to carefully sweep under the rug, and at least one application to gram witten theory, in particular the, the crap and resolution conjecture. So I said nothing in this first five minutes. I guess it all can start. <coughs> so One. So let me start off with, well, M, a close oriented. Am I working too small? Is this readable from, from the last one? Okay. Uh, well, the real three manifold. And I'm going to fix G, a compact Lie group. <coughs> which, throughout most of this talk, will be just you want. Um, I'm going to consider a, well, a trivial G bundle. will denote a uh, smooth G connection. On E, and I'm also going to fix kappa, an integer, and R, an irreducible representation of G. Out of this data, I can define a functional transgression form of the second chart character, which to a connection A <coughs> assigns the integral over M of kappa over 2 pi trace 
which in the case of UN will be a trace in the fundamental representation. Just fix UN for a moment. A wedge DA plus two thirds H wedge A wedge. So this all depend on, depends on the smooth uh, structure now. We haven't picked a many metric in this. And what then? In 1988, proposed that a topological invariant of three manifolds, depending on all these data, uh, will arise from sort of averaging over connections. So if you're a physicist, you will consider the path integral over a sp space of connections module of vertical transformations of exponential I S transforms of A D A. And there so there's a number of things that we can compute out of this. A sort of higher dimensional analog of the matrix integrals that Bertrand was uh, introducing in the morning. And there are natural quantities that we can compute. What is the partition function? It's going to, be, it's going to depend on our three manifold, uh, on our integer kappa called the level. And if I stick to the fact that g is equal to un, it's going to depend on the rank of u. Or if we have a knot, if we have kappa, well k, a knot inside our three manifold M, we can consider where the holonomy um, from kappa of a gauge connection A and take the trace in a G or well, irrep labeled by by letter R. And we can normalize this guy by the partition function. So I'm gonna denote this by W. This is what a physicist would call a Wilson loop. It's a function of M, kappa, M, and our representation. Which is not the same as R. It's not the same R as you use to normalize. No, it's the same R. It is the same R. This R is, is that R. There is, there is no R in normalizations, I guess. No, no, no. In normalization, it, ah, you can take trace R. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, this is fixed. This is fixed once and for all, and this goes for the right. Okay. <laughs> Let me call this star double star. So some, some four, four remarkable facts about these two quantities. So the CES um, in, the, in, in the subscript of the actual sense for Jared Simons. And this is what a physicist would call quantum Turing Simons theory with gauge group UN. So, if you're a physicist, there are many expectations that you have and that you can prove at a heuristic level. So, the first is that this is a topological theory, which is obviously true from the classical viewpoint. But you can prove that quantum mechanically this is preserved up to minor tweaks in the phase of the partition function and, and of the Wilson loop. So what this gives you, if you can compute it, is uh, a topological, well, a smooth and topological, three manifold invariant. So the slight tweak that 
uh, I didn't discuss is, is in fact an invariant of frame three manifolds. And the second and perhaps most remarkable fact about this quantum field theory is that it, it is exactly so. By canonical quantization on Riemann surface times uh, times a line. So by canonical quantization, we can show a remarkable relation with rational conformal field theory. And in particular, the kind the would-be physics invariants that it would compute in this formula turn out to coincide on the nose with um, the invariants introduced by Russia, Tikhin, and Turayev. for frame knots and frame three manifolds um, arising from, from quantum groups. And in the case of knots, you can recover the Hohenflicks cane, or Kaufman in the case of, in which you switch from UN to say SON or SPN. So there's a whole class of topological invariants and of three manifolds and of knots that arise this way. But there's, a, there's another approach to, other than using canonical quantization, which is to treat the path integral formally as a cubic correction to an otherwise bilinear and well-defined um, Gaussian theory. And this makes perfect sense to solve um, in the limit where the, the equivalent of h bar for this QFT is small, which means large cup. So this can be, the problem can be approached by looking at perturbation theory. A large kappa, so this framework, this subsumes perturbation theory around the trivial connection subsume the theory of oscillate invariance. This can be seen, for example, in temporal gauge. But a second type of perturbation theory, which was um, alluded to earlier this morning by Bertrand, is to consider instead of the limit of large k, you can consider the limit of large, sorry, it's a copy. You can consider the limit of large kappa and n. So again, in this case, you stick with un. And you keep kappa over n, the ratio of kappa over n fixed. Total expansion. Then, For any gauge theory, or as for matrix models, uh, say in the case of the remission ensemble, when you consider the integrals formally and you have a diagrammatic expansion of the partition function, and uh, and the vats of uh, gauge invariant operators, there's a so if you consider the log of star, so the log of z, let me call it f, log of z, m, up, n, I'm going to call this f, m, kappa, n, as a formal um, expansion at large n of the type sum, g greater than 0, n to the 2 minus 2g, fg of, uh, well, n, and the ratio kappa over n 
that I'm going to be fixed. And I just erased them, but if instead of, con of considering averages of, say, sure polynomials of the Carton element represent uh, your, your holonomy, you consider, well, Newton polynomials. There's a, an analog of the multitrace operators, connected multitrace operators that we're trying to introduce today, Ws. M and kappa N and then I have well a string of integers. I'm gonna consider a vector of integers H, so sort of cumulants, well the exact analog of the cumulants that we're trying as considered early today. Here I've got a sum two minus two G minus well, the length of the string of integers times some function wg depending on n cup over n and the integers that define my traces so this is kind of reminiscent of what was introduced in, in this morning's talk. And if you look, for example, at just the first line, well, if you're a physicist, you would say, well, if I interpret 1 over n as a string coupling constant, this is, well, the free energy of some theory of first quantized strings, some string theory with some target that will depend on my three manifold and whose background would be somehow described by this range. And mathematically, there's a sort of, sort of this moment is at the stage of just wild speculations. The whole question is, well, is there any such thing? Is, is there a string? Or is this the kind of gadget that will come when you want to pack together invariants that arise from any cohomological field theories? Uh, just integrals over m, g, and bar, during string or coft interpretation. Of, let me call this star prime, star. Just, this is just no grounding for the moment. Just a belief that we may have is what in, actually inspired Toft in his paper in 74 in the context of, of QCD. But yeah, this, it makes sense to pose the same question here. And we have a shot at actually giving an answer here. Well, So what is H with the arrow? Right. So instead of considering, so instead of considering verbs, so normalized verbs of a short function of some Cartan element E U, I want to consider well Newton polyn averages of Newton polyn. I'm just changing bases in the space of symmetric functions. So P <coughs> H E to the U. So I got I get just powers of power sums in the Cartan element where the, the occurrence of each trace is, is labeled by, by a vector of integers h which is, which is zero from some point on. Right, so what do I want here? Yeah, I may use this one. And I take the connected part. This is vital in order to have a 
Um, well, one of our expansions that is analytic up to some some code. So this bags for the for the introduction of some other gadget. So since we started from some topological gauge theory and we want some string theory that is dual to it, it's worth looking at topological string theories. And I'm going to look at one particular version of it, the so-called topological A model. So this is the theory that arises when you twist n equals 2 to sigma models. Um, to, uh, to some killer manifold x symplectic form omega and what you're interested in is in well, intersection theory on moduli of, of stable maps to, to x. So the fact that the string theories are topological means that they have a they have a purely syntonic character as soon as you compute. Um, observables that are in the in the cohomology of the topological PRC operator. So they localize on uh, classical equations of motion, which in this case is Cauchy, and you want to construct a modular space of um, uh, of holomorphic maps to your given target space. So this is a modular space of morphisms. From, from a source projective curve of genus G to X. So in fact, I'm going to take this pointed P1, Pn. To X, where the image of fundamental class CG is uh, some class beta in H2 of XZ. And I take quotients by biolomorphic equivalents. And this was done earlier today. I'm going to consider the Konsevich compactification of these guys. So I'm allowing double points on the source curve. And I'm contracting components that have an automorphism group of, of in infinite order. So if we restrict ourselves to if we restrict ourselves to the case where X has dimension three and it has trivial canonical class. There are sort of two, well, there is one obvious generating function of, of uh, intersection numbers on this moduli space. You start with the case where you have no mark points. Find f, I'm going to put a twiddle, g sine parameter t to be equal to, uh, well, this is sum. two homology classes x in Z weighted by some fugacity so this is what the, so the T parameter here is dual to the index that goes for the ride on numerically, numerically effective classes on X and here I have well the degree of the fundamental class the virtual fundamental class in this model Or 
this song. <clears throat> Physics notation. This is well the co the connected co co the logarithm of the partition function of 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 the topological A model. This is something that has when you when you organize this as a sum over the genus is something that order by order can be matched with um, well, free energies of whatever has one over n expansion. So we got that. Let me call it star second. And as as far as the double stars go, we can introduce more points. Double GN twiddle depending on the same parameters in the second cohomology of X. I'm going to throw in well, a bunch of parameters dual to mark points insertions. And, well, suppose X is toric. Okay, let me say that. Let me say this in a second. So this is a correlator of well the kind of cohomology classes that you can consider for intersection theory on this moduli space. We've seen we seen already an instance in the morning. So you have as for the for the moduli space of stable curves, you have tautological line bundles that uh, are perfectly defined here as well. You can consider their curvature classes. So there are psi classes that I can pack in generating function form. And one of the things that we gain from the fact that we have some target space is that we can pull back cohomology classes from the target by evaluation morphisms. So the sort of most general PRC operator that you can consider in this theory. Now, When X is a Calabiao, this contains no extra information with respect to this. There is some universal, universal differential operator in the variable T, out of which you can extract this W tilde starting from F tilde. But suppose that X admits some holomorphic isometry. Suppose, in particular, that X is toric, so you have a rank 3 group of holomorphic isometries that, that you can play with. Then, in this case, uh, the degree axiom in of ordinary gram weak theory breaks down. And this allows this guy to be actually much more refined than, than its non-equivariant counterpart. So if X is toric and you work equivalently with respect to a torus section, this is actually a quite rich object. So if phi alpha is here, phi alpha i, our homology classes in X and the psi Their first turn classes of the tautological line bundles that have already appeared with the same definition, essentially, uh, in, a, in the case of, of just stable curves. So now I'm going to take this as a candidate for a, for a double star. What time did it start? 2.10? Half an hour. Okay. So, right. So when, in particular, when g is equal to zero and n equals to one, then double star prime is so called. This given pulse J function. Of X. So in here I'm also this this is going to depend on the details of my torus action. And there will be actually so this will depend on this will depend on one integer ambiguity in the choice of torus weights that I'm yeah, let me parameterize it with an integer f. This is basically telling me what torus action I'm looking at. So there's a small aside. If 
if you know about this, since it was mentioned more or less covertly in Bertrand's talk, when X is toric, it's toric Calabian 3, there's a, well, there's a sort of calculational definition of open ground width invariance by localization. They're actually defined by localization. Into cards and U. And if you've heard about this, well, the generating functions of, say, counts of uh, holomorphic maps from open Riemann surfaces of genus G and H components of the boundary relative to some. Uh, a toric Lagrangian ring. These guys are computed in a sort of discrete transform of this double star prime. So this thing will depend on, say, for the, for the case of, of one hole, it will depend on, well, cohomology parameters t, your choice of torus action f. It will depend on the choice of your Lagrangian, and it will depend on a winding number variable d. These guys are at the topology of S1 times times a, a two real plane. And this is a sort of uh, so let me introduce a winding number variable associated to, to the winding over this S1. And there's a kernel given by the other beta function of minus df df, uh, sorry, it's d minus 1, df plus 1 to the minus 1 applied to w tilde uh, g1 of t and f and z set to 1 over d times wd over d squared. So open ground with turn invariants are reconstructed. Well, actually, it's the, what, what the localization formula tells you is precisely how to uh, recover this open, open string count so from the descent. You information about the phi and pi, right? Right. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, great point. So yeah, this guy will depend on, on a bunch of cohomological data. If you, if you take the alpha 1, alpha n to parameterize, well, to, to index the cohomology classes that are concentrated at the fixed points, of, of the torus action, then this will compute. Uh, so, so picking like one particular fixed point, will select a Lagrangian such that um, well the holomorphic disks in uh, in your open gram witten count will attach to that particular well the cap of your holomorphic disk will will attach to that particular fixed point. So that's so they, they're sort of buried in here in the in the choice of Lagrangian. So suppose there is even a remote chance that with the Rashadic in trial invariants of, of a three manifold M can be reconstructed, can can be given a, an alternative interpretation in terms of one Witten theory. Well the question is what's the target given some three manifold? So let me give you the example. Just the example. So take M to be simply connected. And at this stage I'm not I'm considering either either no knot, so just a partition function, or the trivial knot. Now, in this case, if you take the one over N, so let me let me actually introduce parameters lambda 2 pi i over kappa plus n t equals to lambda times n, then as a function of these two parameters, f of s3 lambda t, well, on general grounds, has some definite 1 over n expansion, so some lambda expansion for, for positive g with some f g of S3 
and t, and this guy is computable in closed form. As I said, Trier Simon's theory is, is exactly solvable, and this is a case where, where we have exact formula and we know how to do asymptotics to all orders in, in one gram. So, in general zero, this gives a polylogarithm of order three in the exponential of t. Plus a quadratic part that I'm discarding at this stage. In general one, it gives minus one on 12, logarithm one minus e to the t, plus a constant term that I'm actually discarding at this point. And higher genus, it gives well, essentially the dual characteristic of mg, v2g over 2g, well, divided by 2g minus 3 factorial, so I get 2g minus 2 factorial, times some rational function in the exponential of t, which is actually a polylogarithm of order 3 minus 2g of e to the t, plus some constant term b to g, b to g minus 2, so these are Bernoulli numbers, over 2g, 2g minus 2, 2g minus 2 factorial. This may or may not ring a bell, but around the same time where this asymptotic, well, in the same months when this asymptotic expansion was done by Gopakumar and Vafa, Faber and Pandaripande studied the, the application of the virtual localization formula to the case of uh, essentially the, the local neighborhood of a rigid P1 inside a Calabi L3. So lo and behold, theorem fg of s3 comma t coincides with generating function of gram witten invariance at genus g for some torical bl 3 fold x the killer parameter t where x is a total trace of two copies of the other tautological line bundle over p1 so left hand side to Kapakuma and Vafa, and the right hand side, Hammer and Pandarikan. And for example, if you look at what happens when you when you consider insertions, well, you could compute, for example, a planar limit of of the kohler homfi polynomial. In the case of well, a single winding number. So it's a function of kappa and, and d. Well, there's some hypergeometric function minus d, df minus 1. Minus df. df plus d, 1 minus df, e to the t. Well, there's some proportionality factor that. I'm discarding here, but it's independent on, on e to the t. It's related to the beta function that I put it there. And this is the codes given to our j function. For x. Well, equivalent with respect to some torus action specified by the framing f. So there is some framing in here as well. There's complete coincidence of two gadgets that, well, on the face of it, have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Um, something leaves on in, in three real dimensions, that is a topological invariant, and then you have symplectic invariants of, of Calabi-Yau trees. And it, it's even, well, it's hard to tell why you really have to be Gram-Witten theory to reproduce 
um, the one over an expansion of Trinsano's theory. And if you pick S3, what's the relation with X? There's so one. And many Ys. So let me let me address first though. So why so how does this color BL3? Well very simple color BL3 arises from, from S3. This is not the simplest color BL3 that you can construct out of a out of a three manifold. That would be well your first shot at, at a six-dimensional symplectic manifold that you can construct from S3 is well you take a cotangent bundle on a three sphere, which is this this can be equivalently represented as the affine quadric quadric in in C4, suppose S3 as radius R, the R would pop in here as uh, as a complex deformation parameter, then you can degenerate this S3 What you get is a quadric cone. So this is a cone over S2 times S3. And this admits uh, a canonical toric resolution, which is crepent, uh, and is given by the small blow up of, of this cone. And this is a vector bundle on, on P1. Um, which is actually, to P1 is actually rigid, and there's only thing that this can be, this is O minus 1, plus O minus 1, of P1. So this is. So there is some, some relation between the two, but still why? Um, so physicists, First gave an interpretation in terms of well a carbon space interpretation. Now this generating function of of ground weighted invariants have have an interpretation in, in type two compactification as computing some some protected terms in in n equals one and n equals two uh, quantum field theories in four dimensions. And for example the superpotential. Superpotentials can be computed either by considering the topological string with either brains, so some open string theory, leave it in here, or by considering fluxes. And it turns out that the brain configuration in here can be related precisely, and this was done by Bafa, yeah, especially by lifting to M theory by Atya. Well, the same in Bafa. So that you get an identity at the level of what this computes in the physical theory. And so microscopically, another thing that would be desirable is to, well, see some theory of um, C transcendence somehow appear from the string path integral on the result conifold. And there is a beautiful paper by Uguri and Vafa, which builds heavily on, on a previous paper by Whitten. So we're going to show them that open ground Whitten invariants on T star of S3, where the Lagrangian, uh, with a Lagrangian taken as a zero section uh, of this bundle, are equi is equivalent to, to UN Simon's theory. So this boils down to proving an equivalence between open ground width and closed ground width. And in physical terms, you can see this as a sort of new phase that opens up on the word sheet. Then when you integrate it out, it creates holes on your word sheet. And that's precisely what you get. So mathematical is the sort of mathematical version of this phi 2 in some ongoing work of, of YP Lee, which is pretty much uh, along these lines, and the second mathematical or physical, depending on your inclinations, 
uh, explanation comes from the fact that both sides are governed by the topological recursion. In particular, Chern Simons theory can, Chern Simons theory partition functions have um, in a representation, an integral representation due to first Rodzonski and Lorentz, and then in more generality by Marinho in terms of, of UN matrix <coughs> models. And this gives you the kind of structure that you expect from a topological recursion, some W10 and some higher WGH computed by the topological recursion itself. This has been proved actually by uh, Borot in Arg and Laurent Tan. And on the string side, you have a natural candidate for W10 that comes from toric mirror symmetry. And the last, that, well, the rest that you have to prove is that this gravitational descendants obey the topological recursion. And this was what was into that at, at the end of Bertrand's talk. So you have the same initial datum for the recursion and the same recursion. Two things agree. Just one question, yeah. In conical transition, on resolve conical to have toro section, yeah? Yeah. yeah. But on chan sense you ignore toro section. Yes. It's kind of strange, yeah. No, you have the frame that's that's the thing, you have the framing. That so that's you should put in toro section to chan sense so how yeah. So so the thing is, uh so you, not only you have a, a toro section, so in the because in, in a custom approach you need to pick up a torus action that preserves the, the canonical bundle of, of your X. Um, plus some um, constraints on where you put the Lagrangian, this leaves you one parameter ambiguity. No, and but does means that in Chen Sanus also should consider this equivalent parameters, those sections are popular. Well, what, what, the, what, what the equivalent parameter matches with on the Chen Sanus side is precisely the framing parameter. So it's, th it's, that's, that's it's kind of strange because it, it, it is not completely intuitive. You have two ambiguities on, on, on the two hands. So you've got framing on one side and the choice of torus action. And the two happen to match, but I don't have a conceptual explanation of why they have to match. So in canonical framing, yeah, you have some, some you have an identification and you see that changing framing amounts to changing torus action on the other side, on, 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 on the problem witness side. Um, yeah, but I cannot offer you a conceptual understanding of that. So, this is very nice. So it's kind of appealing that two theories as different as these two enjoy a, a relation, and there's something that you can do out of this. So implications. Witten, Rashadik, and Turayev. Wrong Witten. So on one hand, Witten, Rashadik, and Turayev invariants are naturally defined at, at finite level and uh, especially at finite rank. So this resumes from Witten generating functions to all general, which is typically something that is very hard to attain. And one of, so by gluing, there's an application to higher genus gram witten invariance of tori Yaus. And for example, this is the, the natural gadget that you would use to test stuff that works uh, when you want to analytically continue in the string coupling constant, the genus counting uh, coupling constant. So example, gram witten DT. And on the other hand, what Ruben was was mentioned before is that there is a reinterpretation of chromo witten invariance in terms of BPS state counting. And so chromo witten invariants are, in general, initial uh, rational numbers. Uh, they don't have immediate enumerative meaning, but in this context of Calabiaus, they can, they can be reconduced to, they, 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 they can be expressed in terms of integral BPS invariants, as shown by Pandari Pand and Thomas. And this is kind of unexpected when it comes to looking at the structure, for example, of the Homely polynomial for, for, for a class of knots, like Brownian knots. 
this is not the LMOV conjecture, which is which was proven by uh, by Kevin New and and Pan Peng uh, about five years ago. This is extremely appealing, but it's one example. There's There are many things that need to be understood, and the least that you want to ask is, well, if you cannot explain, at least try to generalize as much as possible this picture uh, from S3 to the unknot and gauge group UN to, well, as general as possible, three manifold M, uh, an arbitrary knot, and an arbitrary gauge group G. Well, G has to be. Mm? Sorry. You, in your expansion, you can see the large N limit. Yeah, so G is classical. G is a classical group. So UN, S1, SPN. Yeah, so this, this, these are the, the cases that you're confined. Uh, so, in particular, this extension to orthogonal and symplectic group was considered by, by Senior and Vafa. There's an analog of these integrality conjectures. One. One extension to, so moving from the unknot to, to, for example, torus knots. Well, there have been proposals for an A model and a B model. Um, so both of a special curve and of some A model target, by the A model by Yakonescu, Shen, and Vafa. And for the B model, by myself, Enard, and Mourinho, it seems very hard to go beyond this case of torus knots. There, there is an ongoing big project, though, which seems very promising by Aganagic, Vafa, Echo, and Gern, to, to generalize this to the, to the case of general torus knots, but the role of the topological recursion in that case is at best unclear. And a sort of more drastic thing that we can do is, well, change three manifold. And yeah, this is what I'm going to discuss in the last five minutes. So, so I think that, well, the broadest is probably the broadest class of examples to which you can put this, this equality of chain science with Ronnie Whitney to work is to consider M a spherical cipher manifold. So gamma is a fine software. Two, two obvious questions are what is the dual curve counting theory that you're looking at? And second is what is the, well, using the translation for spectral curves, what is the dual spectral curve depending on gamma such that uh, well, free energies and the gravitational descendants are computed from topological recursion on this S. The general strategy is take take the, the conical transition picture seriously. This is this gave us uh, a big clue what to look at in the in the S3s. Let's try and persevere and consider quotients of this story by by gamma. There are essentially two cases. The one that I want to discuss more rapidly is the case in which gamma is a billion. So this leads to land spaces. So 
So you got a cotangent space on, on a length space LPQ in here. You got a quotient of the singular conifold by some singular group action. So you had to, you started with some, some toric variety. You had a C star cube inside. You quotient by a cyclic group. You still have a C star cube inside. Uh, and you can resolve. So this is still toric. This, everything is toric in here. And you can resolve this torically, and it's going to give you some candidate for what x gamma should be for length spaces. So the story is completely parallel to the S3 case when, when these three manifolds are monopole bundles. There's a slight de departure that I'm not going to discuss uh, for the general length space, but this whole story can be generalized. And in particular, what's left is the spectral curve. Is the, since everything is toric, you have toric mirror symmetry that you can appeal to. So the, the whole Rebuffa mirror is what will give you the spectral curve. So this was done well, they, by many people starting beginning of 2000. The case that was left out is the case when gamma is up to central extension, uh, a finite suburb of SU2. So this is what I'm looking at presently with uh, Gaetan Ball and MPI Bond and Albrecht Klein. <coughs> now in this case, um, gamma is not abelian. So what you're going to get in here is something that is not toric. So there's no, this is not toric, there is no hori buffer and no special curve that you can construct this way. But with the fact that the subgroup is inside SU2, you see that the, the, the quotient group acts fiberwise on, on the result conifold. So what you get is uh, you can resolve this fiberwise by the canonical resolution of type ADE singularities. It is going to give you some triple, which is not toric, but that is absolutely uh, well. It's clearly identified. The problem is is there any way, starting from that, to construct a spectral curve? And one way that is inspired from the geometric engineering of Katz, Klein, and Waffa is actually connecting some dots in the physical li literature, is that, well, the spectral curve for this gamma is the Spectral curve of the uh, well, I'm going to call it. It's probably not standard notation, but the ADE relativistic uh, total chain. Well, actually, the the generalization to to arbitrary Lie groups of the periodic relativistic total chain. So for type A, this was uh, considered by Roizenars in the mid-80s, and then generalized to arbitrary gauge group, to two arbitrary uh, eight simply these groups by, by Suris and most recently by uh, Fock and Markov and Williams. This passes several tests, and in particular, since in this case as well, as for land space and the three, the Chern Simons. Uh, observables enjoy a representation in terms of matrix in integrals, you can match the spectral curve that you get on one side with a proposal that comes from here. And we don't have a complete proof at the moment, but for example, for the trivial connection contribution, we can test, well, we can explicitly see that the spectral curves of the chen simons matrix model uh, is given by a suitable, a suitable restriction of the action variables of, of the spectral curve that you get from this class of complex integral systems. And if I can conclude in two minutes, there's one application this has to Wands conjecture, to the Kraken resolution conjecture, a higher genus. Uh, this sort of philosophy was exploited in, in Taipei by myself with Cavalier and Ross to prove that uh, the higher genus full descendant version of the Kraken resolution conjecture holds for, for type A singularities, by which I mean that the full descendant ground width and potential for type A, well, for C2 mod Zn, 
resolution is given by the action of some quantized operator, quantization of some element of the symplectic loop group acting on uh, the full descendant um, gram witten partition function at all general of the orbifold theory. And it was crucial in there uh, to explicitly see that the R matrices in, in the given Tal's approach for uh, the calculation of these sets agree on the semi-simple locus. And this comes from some asymptotic, um, or some asymptotics in, in, in one variable for the guy that you extract from the spectral curve. And for DNA, &E, the kind of given tall mirror symmetry theorems fall short of giving an answer, but this integrable systems viewpoint is probably the key to, to generalize this to, to the case of uh, general AD surface singularities. I can stop here. Okay.